Hey, hey, Dr. Brooke here with another epic ride through the Web3 universe. I am joined by a co-pilot today that I'm very excited to speak with. Uh, she's also a fellow lady in the blockchain space. This is Jackie Cooper, uh, who's also an attorney. Uh, she does crypto consulting and estate planning for individuals and businesses, NFT creations, crypto taxes, metaverse resources, proof of sale operations, blockchain asset brand, brand development, hard wallet resources, and educational platforms. She does a lot here in the Web3 world. Welcome to the show, Jackie. So glad you're here. I'm very excited to be here. I uh, have been following you and um, this is a, an honor and I'm really excited to be chatting with you. Definitely. So fun. I, I just, I, I have a heart for the ladies, especially in ladies doing education in the blockchain world. So yeah. we are two peas in a pod right now and I love it. <laughs> uh, thank you so much again. And with that being said, as I always ask my co-pilots on the show, what is your intro story into Web3? How did you get here? So um, it was about four or five years ago now. I, I've always been curious um, about blockchain and cryptocurrency. And I was, I was always trying to find someone who could explain a little bit more. And it wasn't until I met another woman who's in Scotland that she took the time and answered my questions and pointed me to other resources and really became a mentor to me where I opened up my first wallet, purchased my first altcoin, and then ended up you know, getting Bitcoin and a whole slew of other things. And, you know, as everyone says, there's a proverbial rabbit hole. Um, I started my talk show right around that same time because I realized, um, you know, whether you have a degree or not, the the blockchain is not always intuitive. And, it, you know, I was struggling trying to figure things out, you know, um, how to move money, you know, t from fiat to, you know, to the platform that could get me the, the crypto that I might want. Mm -hmm. And so I started, I started the talk show really to document my journey. And then as I started reaching out to people, I said, would you like to be on my show and explain more about what you're doing in your story? And so I met people from all over the world, um, you know, again, uh, in the NFT space, the Web3 area, the metaverse, um, Bitcoin. Um, I'm a Bitcoin miner now. I mean, there's just, wow. you know, uh, the where I was at the beginning to, I'm also a teacher in addition to being a lawyer, but so I kind of always equate my learning to what we do in school. So I, at the beginning I was in kindergarten today, I might be a fourth grader, you know, but again, <laughs> you know, it's, um, there are people who are coding. And for me, that's like graduate school because I have, my mind doesn't wrap around it, but I totally admire what they're doing. So yeah. there's a, and this space is evolving. So mm -hmm. it's, um, you know, it's been very exciting to be um, part of the journey um, of seeing how things are evolving and and also helping, like you said, educate others so that way they can navigate whatever area they want to go to. Wow, that is such a powerful journey uh, into the space, you know, going from I love the the analogy you gave about being in kindergarten and barely getting into fourth grade, you know, five years in or so. And yeah. there is still there. The space is evolving still a lot more. Um, I have been here for two years now um, as as a person who has five years under her belt. I consider that more of a veteran. Um, you've been here a while. You've seen a lot of things happen. You know, yeah. I've seen the whole debacle of 2022 go down. And um, it's been quite a journey. And I, I really truly believe and I know that you would agree with this is that education in blockchain is so vitally important, especially for women who have very different investment style brains. We don't think like our male counterparts when it comes to investing. And there are things that we need to know before we dive headfirst and start dropping, you know, dollar bills into a space where we know nothing about it. So um, that, that journey here has been pretty epic for you, it sounds like. I'm sure there's been a lot of, you know, dips in the road and different learning experiences, but you made it. <laughs> yeah. And um, you're right about the financial side. You know, again, I know that you, you know, probably do disclaimers and everything. You know, what we're going to be talking yes. about is not financial advice, not legal yeah. advice. Everyone has to do their own research. But for me, I was never interested in traditional financial stuff, stocks, yeah bonds. I wasn't interested in that. Mm -hmm. My major at college was science, technology, and society. And when I ended up 
um, discovering the blockchain, I thought, wow, I've come home because this was, and I, uh, the traditional fintech, uh, traditional finance, I, I was never that um, intrigued with, but the fintech world I was. And with, um, you know, my major in science, technology, and society, I felt like I had come home because of the fact that it dealt with policy, it dealt with um, the alternative reasons why people um, look at the financial world and having control over their own finances. And that's why Bitcoin was created in order to have people uh, be able to um, not deal with the traditional banks. And, you know, again, you see the different countries that have adopted Bitcoin, um, you know, El Salvador and other countries in Africa as well, because they're traditional currency is not stable. And so yeah. Bitcoin, um, even though there's volatility, always there'll be volatility, um, in, you know, in the crypto space, it still is, um, it still retains value. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, it's sort of like real estate, it's sort of like gold and silver, precious metals, mm -hmm. you know, there's a, there's a, our dollar is not backed by gold anymore. So really, you know, yeah. It's just the faith of the people that it's going to have value, but then you have inflation. And so what you're able to buy, you know, changes. So this has been an interesting experience for me in terms of learning more about the financial world from the alternative perspective. Yeah. And this, that, that viewpoint or that, that education that you got has led you to authoring some really powerful um, books that help educate people in the space. Let's get into your authorship um, and how that journey kind of begun and where it's brought you to now. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. And for everyone who's listening, you can, you know, I've self-published at the moment, even though the, I do have someone who's who's looking at trying to get some of the books into um, major bookstores, but um, you can find them on Amazon. And I did it for a variety of reasons. I have a 26-year-old daughter and she's very savvy, but I asked her at one point, you know, what interest do you have in um, the cryptocurrency area? And she said, none. I said, well, I'm not putting a lot of money into, you know, the wallets, but, you know, I'm putting, you know, $10 here, $10 there. Mm -hmm. You need to know where I'm putting the funds because that's your inheritance. Mm -hmm. And as an attorney and a parent, I also am very aware that a lot of people don't have wills and they're not talking to their families about the dabbling that they're doing on the blockchain. And that really bothered me. So, um, yeah, so um, I, you know, I chatted with her about um, how to navigate the blockchain and I realized it's again it's not intuitive some wallets you are online mm -hmm. some of them are on your phone some you verify through google authenticator some you verify through your phone some through the email mm -hmm. and so um I realized how difficult it's become more um natural for me when I have to go check on something but for someone who's new the idea of okay where do I go first so yeah. the first the first book that I created was the um the best five minute crypto wallet and wealth organizer which is a simple um checklist and so mm -hmm. basically what I've used is I've used the the organizer pages and I've put my information in so she can go know where to go for each Thing that I have. And I designed that so people, when they get it, can make copies. So that mm -hmm. way, as they, um, uh, they can use it for traditional finance, as well as for the crypto side, they, they can give it to their attorney or their, you know, state planner. And that way, or they can put it into, you know, a safe deposit box. Mm -hmm. But pe people need to know where your money is. Otherwise, mm -hmm. if you get sick or something else happens, um, then they're searching through the house thinking, okay, now what? And with, with cryptocurrency, yeah. if you don't tell your family, it stays on the blockchain forever and they have no clue. So, yeah. so that was the first book that I wrote. The second book that I wrote is because can, being an educator. Oh yeah, go ahead. So sorry. Can I just interject <laughs> really quick? Because you made so, a, you made a very, um, key point there and I I've heard it the other way. And this is the first I've heard it this said this way. And I just want to kind of dig into that a little bit more because you are an attorney and you are, you know, well, maybe you, you aren't specifically helping people create wills and doing all that stuff, but you have the ability, you know how to do that. People aren't doing that. People aren't talking about where they're storing their crypto. A lot of the people, when I first got into the space, were talking about, you know, you don't even share your private keys with your spouse. 
That is a huge no, no. You hide that. You do this. You do that. And when you just said that right now, like, God forbid I get sick or God forbid something happens or you know what I mean? My daughter, who's 12 or almost 12, she's pretty technologically savvy, but not blockchain savvy. Like she wouldn't know how to access it. My, my mom wouldn't know how my sister's nobody. And I'm like, that's an interesting point. I guess we should at least share it with a, like a, a key family member or somebody, you know, that yeah. you have a lot of trust with that you, they know where your keys are. Yeah. I'm not saying give them all 12 keys or 24. What yeah. I'm saying is have them know that in the safe deposit box, this is where I am keeping the history of my wallets and mm -hmm. the, um, my directions, because that should be part of your will. If you yeah. are, if you have assets, you mm -hmm. need to say what you want to have done with those assets. And, you know, real estate is really easy to see. Cars are really easy to see. And mm -hmm. yeah, you do, you do need to, in my opinion, um, walk your loved ones through how to do this, mm -hmm. not, not give them the information so they have it memorized and then can steal from you. It's not that yeah. it's just that, you know, again, because sometimes you do, you know, people get divorced and then there's, there's right. all that, but um, they, they're not going to be as comfortable. It's like riding a bike. The first time you get on the bike, you stumble and it takes a while before you become comfortable. And I still, the first time I go back to a wallet, sometimes I'm thinking, okay. And there was a perfect example is I have an online wallet and I accidentally deleted um, part of it, but I can retrieve it because mm -hmm. I have the keys, okay. but I, I freaked out thinking, Oh no, now what? And there was only $58 in there. It yeah. wasn't a big deal. Right. But then I realized, Oh, I have the information. I can just reenter yeah. it, you yeah. know, but again, when, um, uh, someone in your family, you know, a, either your attorney or your, you don't want, you do have to be careful as to who you share it with for sure. Mm -hmm. You know, this is, mm -hmm. once you give this information to anyone, they can definitely take it, but it's not a question of taking the information. It's making them aware that if something happens, let's say you went to the hospital and you needed access to these funds yeah. for whatever, um, or your family needed it to, you know, for whatever mm -hmm. you, you, they need to know how to do it. So. Right. right. That, yeah. I, I think about it because when I, you know, prior to doing what I'm doing now, I was an accountant and I worked at a bank <laughs> prior to that. And so we would have people come in with the legal documentation that their, you know, loved one had passed and they were mm -hmm. looking to access the account. Well, with blockchain, you're not working with tellers at the bank. You're not working with a face-to-face -face person. This is like, you know, just technology. And so yeah. those keys, you know, if, if somebody passed, those keys, those private keys, they could access the funds with those um, without having to have all these third parties and getting all this proper documentation in place and, and so forth. It, it, it's an interesting and it may be taking the conversation way offline. So I, I that's okay. I, I'm going to ask the question, but then we'll, we'll, you know, and we, we'll, and we can have more than one conversation and more than one episode. <laughs> that's true. That's very, very true. But this particular question is, you know, about in, in terms of a will getting set up, let's say yeah. I had like multiple children, two to three, three kids. I only have one child, but if I had multiple kids and in my will, I said, okay, my daughter Riley gets, you know, 50% of whatever my blockchain assets are. And my kid Jack gets the other 50%. I mean, who's really regulating who gets, you know, the 50%, like a, 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 it could be in the will, but Riley could get the keys and just wipe the whole thing out. So Interesting well, you also, thing that might be coming down the pipeline. Yeah. And the other thing, um, you know, that the other question is, how do you value the 50%? That's because true. E because um, each digital asset has a different valuation based yeah. upon uh, when you bought it, you know, what what's going on and um, and possibly a different appreciation. You know, mm -hmm. NFTs, you know, people might think that, you know, they're just digital assets that are just hanging out there. But, mm -hmm. you know, it's like a painting. Mm -hmm. A painting one day might only be worth a certain amount, but 10 years down the road, it might be, you know. So, again, it, yeah, there are questions that need to be asked. 
maybe not everyone has the answers right now, Mm -hmm. but it's a family conversation that I think is important. And Mm -hmm. um, these are not secrets. These are things that, you know, death happens, illness happens. So we need to kind of, um, it's better to be prepared before you need it. Then, then especially if, you know, someone gets sick and you're in the hospital, you're, you're going to be in a fog. You're not going to be thinking, you know, it's going to be hard enough remembering sometimes some basic things, let alone where, you know, did you do an atomic wallet? What, you know, again, (laughs) there's so many different places that you might have put and in an emergency, you're not going to want to think about that, you know, so Mm -hmm. it's better to do everything before it's ever, ever needed. That very valid point. Thank you, Jackie. Okay. I didn't mean to derail everything, but I know it's okay. To dive and into that some more. I love this conversation because I am passionate about um, information preparation. Mm-hmm. You know, I think that we sometimes um, are scared, and this is something that is, you know, needs to be looked at objectively, not subjectively. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. Okay, so that first book, the Five Minute Crypto Wallet, led you into writing. Uh, yeah, the the Bitcoin Cinderella. A and, diary of her blockchain adventures. Ah, I love it. Yeah. And this okay. is actually a real fairy tale. It's a Cinderella story, but everything within the Cinderella story has a blockchain element. So, you know, yeah. the ball is both at the palace, but it's also in a metaverse. Mm-hmm. Um, the the clock that kicks her out at 12 noon is actually a timed NFT. Um, she does get a uh, Bitcoin from her mom who does not die in this story. Her mom, I actually took some literary license and I said was one of the original blockchain engineers that worked with Satoshi. Oh, and wow. so now she, she leaves the family just to work on a different uh, project. And mm-hmm. she leaves a note for her daughter, Samantha, and with clues. And she said, you, we'll see each other on the blockchain. So this is what you need to do to find me. And so this adventure, this is going to be like Harry Potter, you know, series, yes. it's, it's an adventure series, but um, integrated within is a glossary. So as you're reading, you're learning about what a wallet means, you know, everything else like that. And uh, at the back are QR codes. So you can go to different online resources. I'm in the process of writing my second Bitcoin Cinderella book, which is called the Bitcoin Cinderella and the Seven dwarves and that's where samantha cinderella meets um her cousin snow white who um her dwarves are not mining um gold anymore they're now doing bitcoin mining so um, so that book is only about bitcoin and bitcoin mining and um it's going to be released in time for um the conference in miami in may Uh, Mm -hmm. i'll be there book signing because i i've had i have well, right now, one sponsor, and there's some other sponsors so we can give the book away. So I'm really excited about that. Yeah. That's very cool. I love that. I, I'm just like, because I'm such a blockchain geek, um, like the whole storyline, first off, the storyline, the education, like things that are people are getting from that. I also, too, created like a little dictionary, mini dictionary for Web3 yeah. that people you know can utilize. But I love the fact that they get to also learn it in a story form and then apply those words through the story. It's like when your third grade teacher says, we'll use that word in a sentence. And you're like, that's right. I don't know what it means. <laughs> you know, I don't know how to use it in a sentence. They get to read it in a sentence and then kind of put the meaning, you know, get to see it. So they tie both of it together and then they learn better. Yeah. Very it's a, awesome. It's, it's a fun read. And, um, you know, she does uh, meet her prince and they decide yeah. um, that, um, which is the hop on to the next book, um, that their castle that they're building is going to be heated with Bitcoin and powered by solar. So, <laughs> you know, you know, again, um, and the the glass slipper, I mean, I'll give away some of the things, but the glass slipper actually is the wallet. You know, again, he yeah. has some of the keys yeah. and she has some of the keys. And when they come together, the wallet opens and they know that they're supposed to be together. So... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. All the feels, all the feels is <laughs> so precious. Oh my gosh. I am definitely getting on Amazon right after this episode and getting that. Um, Thank you. And because... after you, after you read it with your daughter, we can kind of do another uh, talk yeah. show to have her answer questions and or ask oh. me questions and stuff like that. So that would be, yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah. So fun. 
Okay. Yeah. And now after Bitcoin Cinderella and the second one that's coming out, you did publish a third book about um, digital assets, like getting funding, using digital assets for nonprofits. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Uh, um, I'll chat about that in a quick second. I also want to okay. mention that the Bitcoin Cinderella actually is translated into Spanish and also Ooh. Creole, and there will be other languages. And it's English on one side and the other language on the other. Okay. So that will be the format for all the translations. So that way everyone can always um, read the English version and then also whatever their native language might be. So is that um, is is it currently that way right now? Like if I ordered on yeah. Amazon, it's okay because yeah. my daughter is fluent in Spanish. Um, oh, awesome. So this yeah. I'm going to make her read the Spanish version and then I'll read the English version. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. You can find the Spanish version as well. Oh, cool. Um, yeah. Cool. And um, awesome. the, yeah, so the, um, the, this book, the digital assets um, fundraising for nonprofits, I did that with another attorney, Patrina Pelton Smith, because we realized that um, the larger universities like Yale and some of the larger nonprofits, American Red Cross and things like that, they're already aware of cryptocurrency, digital yeah. assets, but the middle size, smaller nonprofits, they're still struggling. And I'm not saying that crypto is the best, but what I am saying that is as we are navigating and acquiring crypto and digital assets, people are going to want to donate that to mm -hmm. a cause. Mm -hmm. And in order to do that, the charity needs to know how to accept it. Mm -hmm. And they don't have to accept cryptos. There are enough platforms that Petrina and I research that we are able to consult on where it can automatically be converted into fiat or dollars or euros, right. whatever year. So the cryptocurrency doesn't have to be held by the nonprofit. And that makes it easier from an accounting perspective. But you know, there might be people that um, would like to gift and mm -hmm. if you don't have that in your um, fundraising plan of action, or to even let your current donors know that you are now accepting, then you're actually eliminating a whole area that could raise funds for whatever the project mm -hmm. might be. So, um, and, you know, again, um, some people who are acquiring, you know, crypto and Bitcoin and digital assets, they might not have kids. So they mm -hmm. might want to leave it to a charity. Mm -hmm. And so this is a way that um, they can pass on their, you know, the wealth that they've created to mm -hmm. a cause that they care about. So again, we wanted to make sure everyone ha had had a checklist, was able to ask the right questions, help mm -hmm. educate board, the board of directors. Um, it, you know, just like for us, for corporations, nonprofits, um, there are point of sale platforms that will help you do um, sell your products um, in, with crypto mm -hmm. and also accept crypto uh, for a nonprofit as a donation. So, yeah, wow, that yeah. that is that's so awesome. Um, you're doing a lot in the space. I know in my intro to you, you know, you're doing all sorts of different things, and I think it's absolutely incredible. Uh, can you go into a little bit more with beyond so people could get the books and educate themselves, uh, you know, to the blockchain, to Bitcoin, to Bitcoin mining, you know, fundraising, all of what you just spoke about. But when you talk about crypto consulting um, in your LinkedIn, what does that entail and how can people like work with you? Yeah, sure. So I do have um, a website that people can reach out to me at CryptoMom2.com. Uh, um, and as an attorney, I, I've been approached by different people for different things. And one of the areas that I um, last year became certified on in is cryptocurrency investigation. So mm. if let's say that, um, you know, your wallet's hacked and you need to trace your funds, um, there are uh, not just the platform that I use, but there are other platforms that can help you do that. And then when you end up filing, um, you know, criminal charges or whatever, the um, you're going to need to have a document that shows where the money, where the, the crypto left, where it headed mm -hmm. and where it is. So that's one of the things that I'm, I'm able to do. I always do things in partnerships. So I have others that are doing this on a daily basis because I'm a teacher during the day, uh, yeah. at, uh, you know, and I'm loving that even though at some point I know that I'll be retiring. Um, but um, in terms of, I, 
the variety of things that I've consulted on, um, it's, it's exciting to me because uh, it's been both small business development. Um, it's been, as I mentioned, the cryptocurrency investigation. It's on um, uh, how do I organize my information for my team, you know, mm -hmm. again. Um, so it really, the people who have come forward who've needed help, um, uh, each each situation is a little bit different and unique. And I, I love, um, I, I love the, the multidisciplinary aspect of it. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I'll be sure to also link the crypto, uh, mom, uh, crypto mom com in the show yeah. notes. So people can, uh, access that easily without any friction, um, as yeah. well as link to the Amazon page where they can, uh, get the books and things. But is there anything before we wrap up and bring the ride into the station? Is there anything like final words that you feel like I didn't ask that you want to like share with the listeners? Yeah, so um, understand that platforms like FTX and Celsius and some of the other platforms that have had their ups and downs in this last year, those are platforms. That's not the blockchain. They mm -hmm. use blockchain. They, you know, and obviously there's crypto and stuff like that, but they're no, addition, no different than traditional businesses that could um, be not ethical, you know? So again, mm -hmm. you have to do your own research. You have to, even if you think you know who is who is the face of the company, you never know what the liquidity of the company is. Yeah. So if you are going to be in the blockchain space, you know, again, it's no different than traditional, you have to be willing to lose whatever you invest. Mm -hmm. And um, so the reason why I say that is don't invest your mortgage, don't invest your food money, you know, <laughs> or your child's college education, because there's so many ups and downs in this market. Yeah, yeah, you can, you can do well, but you can also lose it all. Right. And so you do whatever you feel is comfortable within your area. If it's just mm -hmm. $5 a week, so be it. If it's mm -hmm. a little more, but you know, again, if you go to buy a Starbucks, you know, you're putting money there, but you've lost it. So again, yeah. ha have the same attitude that you have no attachment to it. Do your research, get multiple, you know, information from different sources yeah. and, um, and have fun because this space is just phenomenal. The creativity, the DAOs, the, I mean, you know, again, all these areas um, that are developing, um, I, I'm hearing about so many things that is just it's blowing, it blows my mind every time I hear how we're using information to protect yeah. information. Yeah. Um, and again, that's why I'm saying we definitely have to have more than one conversation. <laughs> Oh my gosh, for sure. For sure. It's like, oh my, yes. And I love the idea about getting my daughter on here and the three of us having a conversation, her talking about the book and all that kind of stuff, because she can also help educate the youngsters um, exactly the who are essentially growing up with a, an understanding of this technology, whether they truly know that that's what they're embarking upon. You know, we talk about um, NFTs. My daughter plays these these multiplayer games, you know, like Roblox and Fortnite. Exactly. And those, NFTs are good. They're going to be able to own those assets from those games, you know, with blockchain gaming. And so they're being groomed for it. Where they are, are totally you know, we had to kind of it. learn about it. <laughs> I mean, they're already yeah. in a metaverse, you know, when yes. you think about it. Yes. I mean, you know, I remember when my daughter played with the Wii and, you know, those yeah. were, you know, that was the 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 pre days, you know, before yep. all this was happening. Um, so they're, at, you know, just being in the gaming world, they already know about rewards. They know about mm -hmm. tokens. They just don't understand maybe the currency value behind it. Mm -hmm. And you know, the whole another that's a whole another area I'm going to be dealing with this year that I really want to focus on. I want to do a cursory because I know I can't do a deep dive. I want to look at like every state like starting from Alaska, going all the way down to say, okay, what's their laws? What are they doing in the blockchain? Yeah. And, um, you know, again, um, I might not, when I do the show, it might be current for that moment and there might be new things going on, but mm -hmm. there are states like Wyoming and, you know, Texas and others that are pretty progressive. They're um, in the blockchain space and they're, they're encouraging the businesses to develop. 
yeah we do need we do need legislation for consumers um because sometimes consumers are not don't act smart but um we need also to protect the creativity because this is really entrepreneurship at at the heart of it yes 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 oh gosh jackie this conversation was so amazing like we could go on and on and on but i like yeah. to keep them a little shorter so People are able to listen to them in, in bite-sized pieces and we will for sure reconnect and get you back on and I'll be on your talk show and we'll yep, just keep this sure. relationship going in this conversation. So for those of you listening to me right now, know that Jackie also has her own show, which I will also link um, so you guys can have access to that and really connect and continue the learning process because education in blockchain is honestly like where it's at. This is the prime time to do it with the economy in the state that it's in. This is an amazing opportunity for you to learn and not miss out. In fact, you're in a really good place to invest if you choose to um, embark in this adventure with us. So Jackie, um, really quick before I do pull this in, uh, what is the best way other than the website to connect with you? Do you have social media handles, LinkedIn? Yeah, yeah. So um, Crypto Mom Two is on um, both, you know, Twitter, LinkedIn, um, and if you if you need to email me or want to email me through uh, Crypto Mom Two Consulting at gmail.com, you're welcome to do that. Uh, but yeah, just just you know, put in Crypto Mom Two into most platforms, and something will pop up. And um, I look forward to chatting with everyone. Awesome. All right, guys, you know the drill. If you've listened to any episodes, uh, we, uh, we're going to pull this in and I want you to exit to the right and we will see you on the next one. You made it. Congratulations. That wasn't so bad, was it? I hope you laughed and learned a little bit more about this Web3 universe and how simple and fun it can really be. Would you be so kind as to leave us a review and share it with your friends and family? It would mean so much to get this out to more people as we embark on the greatest transfer of wealth that has ever happened in human history. Can't wait to see you on the next one.